you. Dr. Crystal Marie Fleming is Associate Professor of Sociology and Africana Studies and Associate Faculty in the Department of Women's, Gender, and Sexuality Studies at SUNY Stony Brook. She is an author, cultural critic, and educator committed to empowering people with the conceptual tools needed to understand, confront, and challenge white supremacy and intersectional oppression. Dr. Fleming has conducted research on racism and anti-racism in multiple national contexts and collaborated on empirical projects in the United States, France, Brazil, and Israel. She holds a PhD and a master's degree in sociology from Harvard University and graduated with honors in sociology and French from Wellesley College. Her scholarship appears in journals such as the Sociology of Race and Ethnicity, Ethnic and Racial Studies, Poetics, Du Bois Review, Social Science Research on Race and Mindfulness. Her new book, How to Be Less Stupid About Race, <laughs> on racism, white supremacy, and the racial divide, combines memoir, critical race theory, social commentary, and satire to debunk common misconceptions about racism. The book is available at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, uh, Indie Bound, and bookstores everywhere. Help me welcome Dr. Crystal Lee. Listen, I want everybody to stand up. Stand up. What I want you to do is to introduce yourself to at least three people and turn to them and say, I am so excited to talk about racism. <laughs> Sometimes we don't want to talk about racism because we're fucking tired of racism. <laughs> if you're a white American, you might not feel comfortable talking about racism. Maybe you're afraid people are going to say, well, you're racist, simply because you're white. Um, so there are a lot of reasons why we can be uncomfortable with the topic, but forums like this help change that culture of silence that helps reproduce racism. So yes, this is the book that's out. Um, how to be less stupid about race, and in it, I talk about, of course, my work, my work as a sociologist, but also my own learning experience, how I had to learn about racism even as a black woman. Uh, so, just a, a couple of words about me. Yes, I am a black woman. It struck me as strange that I actually had to say this. I was given a talk in Jersey uh, earlier this year, and a black student was like, "Wait, are you African American?" And I had, I, it, was shock, it was shocking me. I was like, what, do you think I'm a white woman? What do you think I am? I mean, I could be, right? Because race is completely made up. It's completely made up. Um, and so I learned that I actually have to say that sometimes. So my family is from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I don't have the southern accent anymore, except when I'm angry. Um, and uh, my family, my mom and I, we moved to uh, the suburbs of Philadelphia. So I grew up in Jersey and Pennsylvania. And my mother did not talk to me about race and racism when I was a kid. I had to learn about it. Um, so if you want to know more, read the book, but it's not just about my story. It's also about the culture of white supremacy into which we've all been socialized. Right? So as a sociologist, I study, among other things, culture. So we think of culture, we should be thinking of not just education, but that's a big part of it. Not just religion, but that's a big part of it. 
But cultural traditions, right, values, representations, what we see on TV, what we see in the news, all this is part of our culture. And the one term that hasn't been used until I took the mic, I think, is the term white supremacy. So it's so important if we want to understand and fight racism, uh, both its structural and cultural elements, to kind of know what that means. Um, so I want to, uh, next slide, I want to just kind of have some images up as I um, speak about this culture of white supremacy into which we've been indoctrinated. Uh, now, to be clear, when I use the term white supremacy, I'm not using it the way that many people tend to. Well, when you think of white supremacy, you might think of the KKK. You might think of uh, Yapank, New York, with the Nazi enclave. Uh, you might think of far, white, far right white nationalists. But that's not all that white supremacy is. So in my book and in my scholarship, I define white supremacy as the social, political, and economic dominance of people socially defined as white, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things that's unique about our country is that our nation was founded on that culture, the culture of white supremacy. When you think of white supremacy, you need to be thinking of the culture of white entitlement that has been passed from one generation to the next. Uh, the, I know it's a little small for those of you um, in the back, uh, but the first, well, the central image in the middle here is of a, a white woman floating across, right? Uh, floating across the nation. This is an image that represents manifest destiny. Manifest destiny is about white entitlement to this land, right? Entitlement to native land. Uh, the imaginative archive of our culture of white supremacy, right? This is an image on the left. This is a recent image. Uh, if you can tell, this is, who knows who this is a caricature of? Serena, Serena Williams, right? Um, on, the, on the right here, the image of Uncle Sam kicking an Asian man. Right? Our culture of white supremacy has included, as we learned earlier, a culture of xenophobia, particularly of those who are thought of as racial inferiors. Right? Um, colonialism is a big part of our culture of white supremacy. Uh, and so I totally agree with my colleague, Chris Sellers, that when we think about systemic racism in our country, it's not enough to refer to slavery as an original sin. We have to also look at how it was intertwined with settler colonialism, right? Um, next slide. Okay. <laughs> so that's who's that. So when I first saw this image, I thought that maybe it was like a composite sketch of a serial killer. <laughs> <coughs> a little scary looking, right? Um, does anyone actually know who it is? No. You're about to find out. <laughs> so this image was generated from research uh, at UNC this year in 2018. Social psychologists asked a sample of Americans, what does God look like? <laughs> Mm. This is not 1918. This is not 1818. This is not 1718. This is 2018. What a sample of Americans think God looks like. A young, youngish, white man. Yes? Do I think God looks like that? <laughs> well, I'm not a preacher, but I can tell you my God doesn't look like one demographic, right? Right? What does she look like? What does she look like? That's a good question, right? But what do you think it does to police encounters when people think of white men as associated with godliness? Right? White innocence, right, is the presumption of our culture of white supremacy. What do you think it does to uh, loans in banks when people of color come in versus white folks, right? You know what happens if you've studied these issues or if you've tried as a person of color to get these loans. Declined. Declined, right? Culture of white supremacy is a white man who wrote me the other day because he saw me on C-SPAN talking about my book and he said in his email, I'm so interested in your book, but you should spend more time telling black people to work harder. 
that's the culture of white supremacy that we live with, the presumption that people who call themselves white can enslave people they call black to do work that they don't want to do. And then they get to call those people lazy and think that they have a work ethic. That is the culture of white supremacy. So if we want to, what I'm going to wrap up with now, if we want to challenge and change this culture of white supremacy, one of the first things we have to do is get more comfortable naming it. Because sometimes even the word racism can be a euphemism. As though, you know, racism is an equal opportunity system. It's not. Racism is a system of power in which a majority population deems itself superior and channels resources to people who fit their category. Racism is not, and this is what, what I'll end with, racism is not merely prejudice or bad feelings about each other, right? The work of erase racism and groups like erase racism is to show how racism, again, is a system of power and what I just want to add to that is, again, unless you understand that it's a culture of white supremacy, you won't be able to recognize and change that culture. Thank you.